wanted to do that. But, uh, you know, even since I was younger, people would always call me and tell me their problems or they, I, they would pretty much vent, but I would be the one to just listen. And I think I provided that energy and space for them to feel comfortable to be able to share things just like you, where people shared things that they didn't tell anybody else. I, I always got that as well. Even growing up. And it started with your experience from your near death experiences too. Yeah. I had a couple of near death experiences when I was a kid. And I think that opened up a connection, you know, to, to God, the universe, the spirit world. And, um, I think that's where I got more connected. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not everybody needs to have a near-death experience to be connected, but um, I think that's pretty much where it started because we, we're all connected in one way, shape, or form. Could, could you speak a little bit more about some of the, like the first near-death experience that you had where, you know, you, you definitely, because I've, I've heard, I've, I, actually, I think it was either a movie came out or there was a book, you know, I was talking about a child that had something like that happen to them. Um, and he literally passed away, they said, and he came back. And then he was, you know, they did, I forget the name of the book, but, you know, there's a lot of people out there who might think, oh, this is kind of woo-woo stuff and doesn't work and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm here to let you know there's no atheist in a foxhole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that happened. Uh, my first near death was, uh, I was two years old. Um, we just moved into a new house that had a pool and I was taking water out of the pool with a cup. My cup falls in and I try to reach for it and, and I go. Um, at that time, I believe, let me see. There was a couple different times. One year I was two and the second year I was three, but I, I fell in and my dad was in the deep side of the pool taking leaves out and everybody else was inside the pool. But I remember thinking like I could see everybody underwater, but then I started thinking nobody can see me. I'm, I'm here and I'm, it's like, uh, I didn't really feel panicky though. And I do remember seeing like uh, a light, you know, shining from, you know, from above. But I, I guess when I was little, I thought it was the sun shining. I I wasn't too sure, but I must've been underwater maybe two, three minutes. And, you know, for a toddler to be underwater, they can drown in 20 seconds. It doesn't take that long. I would drown in two minutes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, me too. Yeah, it it doesn't take long at all for, Uh you know, because the the lungs start to fill up with water. And so when my dad took me out, he was doing like, you know, follow follow my finger and doing the the testing to make sure I was okay. But, uh, you know, there's no way I could have survived that without brain damage or, you know, dying. So I think that's where, you know, that connection began. Mm -hmm. And, and how did you, how you were able to like turn the, the passion that you have into a career? And I understand that you linked up with Aaron. You guys are working together like Batman and Robin here because <laughs> you both have superpowers, you know, for working yeah. with people, which is amazing. You guys are able to find each other. And how did you turn that passion into an entrepreneurial career? Well, from the work that, that we've done and Aaron as well, you know, people come because they're in pain, but most of their pain doesn't come from a physical issue. It's mostly their thoughts, the things that they think about will create the pain because then they start stressing out and worrying about things and the energy will get stuck in the body. And that's where I'll feel where it's stuck. And, and that's how we work on it. And I'll start crying before they do because I get the vibration as Aaron is working with them. The vibration is sent out and I'll feel it before they even feel, before it even registers to their brain. Wow. It's, it's really interesting. So Aaron, how does that work, man? Tell us, that, <laughs> tell us how that works. Well, it was interesting because when I was running my chiropractic practice, um, I was working with patients and Veronica would just sit there taking notes for me. And as I'm working with somebody, she would start to feel something and like she would just point to me just like very like whispering. Like she's like, hey, check this over here, or check their jaw. And I'd go and look for it and there it was. And then I realized, wow, like she's pretty much spot on. So that, that started to develop my confidence in her. So when I was working with clients, I would be looking at her like, do you feel anything that I don't see or that I'm not looking at? And sure enough, it was always there. And doing work with my patients over the years, I've worked at, I've worked at a hospital, I've worked in my own practice when I wanted to start my own business. And like Veronica said, I say 90% of most of the clients and patients that came to see me all their physical issues are starting from 
all this, all the bottled up energy, bottled up emotions that they're holding on to. If something was going on in their life, whether they were having issues in their relationship, the marital problems, or they were having issues in their business, financial issues were a, a big cause. And as we started doing the neuroemotional work on them, almost instantly their pain would go away. And I wouldn't even touch them yet. And so I realized that, wow, there's a big part of the emotional aspect in the mind because the mind controls everything, the nervous system and, and everything else that goes on is just an effect. So if I wanted to go to the cause. I always ask questions like, why does this happen? And there was one day we went to a uh, workshop uh, doing this neuroemotional work and we were sitting with all these different practitioners and Veronica being the person that she could feel was in this room of all these practitioners. And if you've ever been around a lot of like therapists and all the other practitioners, they're there because they, and this is my belief that a lot of people that get into professions because they've had an experience and they wanted to help other people with that experience. So all these other practitioners were, had all this stuff bottled up inside. And it's like, it was like so much of an energy that hit Veronica. You see her bawling and feeling everybody's stuff. And we would just remotely test that. We would do muscle testing. Uh, okay. Look at that. Look at that person. Like, who is this? Who is it? We don't know. There's a whole room. So just look at that person. Look at that person. We test it. Okay, it's that person right there. And we would actually identify exactly the emotion that they're holding in, what it's related to. And she would process that energy for them. But then afterwards, just to know, like, are we on to something here? We would actually go up to the person and, and confirm, is this is what we're feeling? Is this right? And one guy said, yeah, I'm exactly. Uh, she was crying. And he said, yeah, I, I lost my brother about a year ago. And it's like, this is his anniversary today or this week. And she said, this, I'm, the emotion I'm feeling is this unprofound, requited love, which is forever loved. And he was still feeling it. As, as soon as she said that to him, he started feeling the emotion. Wow. And so that's where we decided to let's put this together because there's a lot of people dealing with a lot of pain, emotion, and not only in their health, but it's affecting them in their relationships, their business, finances, and we can figure out where they're stuck at. Okay. So, so like explain real quick muscle testing, because I think that's one of those things where you and I could talk about all day and we understand, yeah. it. but somebody who's never experienced muscle testing, they're going to be like, what is that? You know, <laughs> it's like a human lie detector too, which is the coolest mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So being trained in muscle testing, you see a lot of people do it. It's really, it's, I always explain to my clients that it's, it's like a reflex test is that your your body will tell us exactly what's going on. And so we're always dealing with the conscious and the subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is the rational thinking mind. It's where you're looking through all your five senses to see what's going on out in the world. And your subconscious is your emotional mind. It's the irrational, but it's really the one that's running the show. Yeah, and so, it's charge. So the conscious mind always thinks like, why does this keep happening to me? But your subconscious mind is always saying, well, you've been telling us this has been going on for a while. This is the program that we're going to run. And so when we're doing muscle testing, it's as if we're asking the subconscious. You ever had people that go to you and like, just you ask them, it's every day, how are you doing today? And most people would say, oh, I'm doing great, I'm doing fine. But we've all had those experiences where maybe we're not having such a great day, but we try to put in the, the smile. It's the mask we put on, like, oh, everything's doing great. But the, the body language, the, the energy that they're putting out is like, oh, something's not right here. So we use the muscle testing to really tap into people. What's really going on? What is that subconscious mind telling us? I can say I'm okay with all these things. Everything's going great. But if I muscle test, the body's going to reflux and just start shutting down. And that's your subconscious mind telling you, no, we're really not okay with this. And so when we're working with people with business, the relationship, they say they want an extra result. They want a better relationship. They want more money. Well, we can figure out if there's any incongruency with that. And then we just tap into where does that come from and how does it get there? Because they're putting out a vibration or an energy that's attracting exactly what they're getting in their life. So the muscle testing just helps us to get there faster than later. That's so cool. Yeah. So, so maybe break it down Barney style, right? That's Barney, <laughs> right? Marine Corps terminology. <laughs> People coming to see you now, do they see both you guys at the same time then when they come in? Yes. Okay. So I would come in and see you. And let's say I want to make more money or get in better health. Yeah. And she would be like sitting in the room basically. <laughs> and then you would, you would start doing the muscle testing side of things. And she could kind of feel possibly where some of those pain points are that people are holding on to. Possibly they had some kind of traumatic experience in the past, possibly around money or possibly yeah. around relationships. Or There's a lot of people that have relationship blocks, you know, like love blocks is what I call them. 
Yeah. And, uh, they can have some blocks there and she can tap into that and then you can help them on their body kind of repair that. Is that? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, it's, he'll muscle test me for them because it, the process tends to go a lot faster because sometimes okay. it's, it's getting used to people's, uh, you know, their resistance. But um, so he'll test me. I'll feel, I, I could feel when we're on track because as soon as he starts asking the questions, I'll feel that vibration before they even say anything. Wow. And I can also feel when, when their emotions coming up and when they push it down, so they can't hide it. Like I know, you know, I'll let them know that, you know, they're, they're stuffing it down. And, yeah. um, but that, that's how we figure out whether we're on the right track or not. And over the phone, like, like say we're doing a live chat right now, I could tap into your energy and feel the same things. So what, what, it, what am I feeling right now? <laughs> People always want to ask her that. When tested, there you go. That's that's a Professor Xavier yeah. effect. I love you. I love you. I love you. Send it nothing but love. <laughs> but if you but if you think about it, um, most people might think it's weird or woo woo. But you know, how can we have this conversation, you and me, on this live video chat? Very clear. From we're on opposite ends of the country. We're yeah. in California. I believe you're in Florida, correct? Uh, it's like how? close enough. Maryland. Yeah. Maryland. Yeah. So on the other side. So how? It's like how can we do that? Someone figured out how to harness that energy, that technology. And all this doing wirelessly, and like our picture, our voices is, is traveling through the air at a split of a second. Well, your thoughts and your energy can do the exact same thing. You just can't see that. Yeah. And so with Veronica, imagine her like the big satellite or antenna. She's mm -hmm. more in tune to that. I can feel it too. I've been more in tune, and she's been helping me develop my intuition. Yeah. And we all have it. We just don't know how to harness it yet unless you practice it. But she's been so good at that that she can feel people even over the phone. We've had people that call us in the office and they're maybe talking about a friend of theirs. And this person's going through this. And as they're talking about that person, she can feel exactly what's going on with that person because she'll start to emote and cry. And then she'll say, are they, are they going through this right now? And they're like, yeah, exactly. Wow. That's, that's wild. So Veronica, mm -hmm. um, first of all, what a gift and a curse, like you said, you know, so I can definitely <laughs> that. Um, what are some of the, and I can't, I can't say like names, like I don't ever say names on anything, but what are some of the, one of the, some of the stories you've had and you've helped people with, um, some of the just wildest things that have happened for people as a result of, from working with you guys? Well, we've, we've worked with so many different people. Uh, we've worked with phobias. Uh, there was people that, um, uh, some guy that came in that had a needle phobia mm -hmm. and he, he was, he had cancer or he has cancer and would go in for, uh, you know, for blood work every week or so. And nurses had to hold him down on a chair just to get the blood work done. And he broke the chair because he was so tense and just fighting it because he was so scared. And we were able to clear that within minutes. And so we showed him a picture of the needle and we would test. He got all shaky, but then we kept working on it. And the I think that following week, he went for blood work and he just looked at it like, like nothing. And he wow. didn't shake, he wasn't nervous. Uh, but we've had so many people from weight loss, um, uh, usually weight loss people tend, tend to hold the weight on because, uh, as a form of protection, uh, we've had people yeah. that have been raped and they hold, held onto the weight because, uh, they didn't want to be attractive. So yep. there's so many things, money as well. Um, so what are some of the entrepreneur stories you've got? Because you probably have some crazy entrepreneurs that crashed the business, maybe caused a divorce, maybe caused chaos in their past life. And chase after the IRS, you name it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, say well, I've, we've got a lot of people who you know, had really very successful businesses and then something happened, let's say 2008, and a lot of people lost. There's something everything. that happened around 2008, you know. Yeah, yeah the, you know, the big crash. And so we've had a lot of people that come in that had it's like they're starting over and they're trying to restart their life again in the business, but they're having so much resistance getting it going because they, whatever that, that feeling for them was going through that experience and yeah. the subconscious brain just says, I never want to go through that experience again. So when they try to go back and do the same exact thing, it's like they hit this wall and something that says, Nope, come on back. And they can't figure out why they can't get their new business started. And as we can clear that, they start to move forward and make progress. And then until the next wall shows up and we kind of keep breaking through that until they get to the point in their mind that says, it's okay. It's okay for me to do this. It's safe for me to do this. Uh, and I just seen so many, a lot of business people that's not even their, 
you know, they're doing so well in their business, but where they're out of balance is their relationship. And they might be making a lot of money, but they're unhappy. So really it's helping people get what it is that they want, no matter what it is. But what, what makes you truly happy? What is it that you really want? And let's help you to identify what's resisting that so we can get you on that path again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I know everything's always been really easy to communicate this message and people just flock to your door. You know, I imagine that happens all the time, right? But what what were what are some of the like low points in your career of doing this? Because I, I know for myself, getting out there, you know, and letting people know about what I do on the on the mindset side of things, helping people over the money blocks, just yeah. like you guys are doing. What are some of the best ways you've communicate your message? Because it's like it, it's one of those things where people ask you what you do, and then you try to explain it. Like you can explain it to me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got it all day long. But to somebody who's out there who's just hearing about you guys, like how do you guys communicate your message to them? So they, they understand they're like, okay, I get that. I want to come in and pay for that. Yeah. It's, it's a great question because on this, on the side, you can understand that it can be very difficult to explain it for someone to, who doesn't, who's not in that wavelength to do that. How, I mean, how would, how do we explain it for people? Uh, well, we help people attract what they want by shifting their thoughts and their energy to the correct vibration of what it is that they want because everything vibrates and, uh, and, you know, I did a video on law of, attra- uh, law of vibration and everything vibrates from the table you have, the chair you're sitting on, but your thoughts as well. So when you're thinking something negative, you're sending out that vibration. You don't even have to say it, but it's going out there. So then you'll attract whatever it is you're focus- focusing on and thinking. Uh, so that's why like people are hard on themselves and they'll say, oh, I'm so stupid. Why did I do that? That's what you're putting out there. But you, it, it's really making it a habit to think about what it is you want every single day. And you'll tend to attract, you know, what, what, what you want. But you have to be on that same vibration and actually feel the emotion of how it would feel if you had it. Mm-hmm. So say you want a, a brand new car. Feel how happy you would be by having that car. Stay in that vibration every single day. Otherwise, if you feel unworthy of having it, and a lot of stuff goes back from, you know, to childhood. Uh, so then you, you start to doubt yourself. Oh, I can't get that because I'm not making the money. The how doesn't really matter. It matters how you're feeling and be aligned with the vibration and energy of getting that. Mm-hmm. I, I 100% agree with what you're saying. How would you, if I'm in an elevator with you and you've got about 30 seconds to talk to me, how do you communicate that message to them? That's what <laughs> That's my question for you. The 30 second elevator pitch. Yeah. Well, it's really helping people to just attract what they want in their life. And we just, by shifting their, their energy, aligning their thoughts is exactly what they want. So that will start to come to them. And that's really the, the shorter way of saying that. And there, there's more explanation to it, but that's the shortest way we can explain okay. it right now. Awesome. Um, and what are, what are some of the biggest, I would say, you know, there's no failure in business and life. There's only feedback. Yeah. And what, what are some of the biggest, uh, opportunities you've had an opportunity to learn from, right? Uh, some of the biggest lessons you've taken away running your business and, and uh, you guys are successful there in Vista and, and helping people. Like what are some of the uh, biggest lessons you've learned from, from being in business? Well, based on the work that we do, since we do this work on ourselves all the time, it's really keeping your emotions under control. Yeah, because life is going to throw its wrenches at you and opportunities. And what we realize is that if you're in a state of worry, in a state of fear, like, oh, we got to pay our bills by next week or um, s- something happens or, you know, a lot of people get those tax bills or whatnot and they start getting into this worry mode about how, how is this going to happen? Then what that does, it's almost like it's pushing away from what you're truly desiring, what your goal is. And I think for us, it's helped me to learn how to get out of that worry mode and realize and as, and when I started to stop worrying, everything started to come to me exactly the way I designed it. And what were some of the worries that you had at that point? I think if anybody, it, it's, it's finances, right? And so as we're starting, you're starting the business, it's like, okay, money's got to start coming in. We're, we're trying to develop this and explain it to people. And, you know, you're thinking, okay, well, we got to, we still got to pay our, our, our bills, rent. And I remember when at that point when I was worrying so much, I actually developed a uh, serious low back spasms. I mean, at one point I was, I was in such a fear mode that I, and I'm a chiropractor, and I was like laid out one night and I couldn't move for three days. And luckily wow. with the tools that we have, I was able to get out of that. And so I realized when I stopped worrying, I realized, hey, my back pain doesn't bother me anymore. And if I, and when I stopped worrying, 
And we're like, well, I realize that the world is abundant. There's abundance of everything. And there's a universal law based on this called the law of supply. And if you look at it outside, I mean, there's an abundance of trees. There's a bunch, they talk about water shortage here in California, but we live on a, on a planet that's mainly covered with water. So it's like, how can we be short of water? You know, money. There's an abundance of money and finances out there. And if people can uh, just shift their thoughts to that, you know, then it, everything just comes down and then you got to go into solution mode. So it helped me to focus on growth rather than lack. So if, if we look back into that side of you, you're, you're laying on the bed there, you're laid up and you mean, what, were you guys working together at that point or, you know, was, where, where were you guys at? At that point, you by yourself been, at that no. point? No, we were barely just, just before we started working together. Okay. So you had like called her up on the cell phone, like this lay on the bed, like, can you get over here? I'm dying. I mean, not- <laughs> we're engaged. So we lived together. So she was right. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so we are the dynamic. We're, we're a couple. You, you let him sit there for three days before you helped him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, she was helping me for three days. So that's what helped. But yeah, it, it really helped solidify my belief, like how the mind can just create so much in your body and your life. And if you just can shift that energy, you shift and, and it happens in an instant. And once we can get out of here, realize that we are the creators. We can create anything we want in our life and have whatever we want. So that really helps restore my faith and my belief. How did you guys get started as entrepreneurs? What's your first memory around money when it comes to being an entrepreneur? Well, for me, I, I was always an entrepreneur since I was a kid. I, I uh, created this candy store in my parents' garage and I set it up and I've always been really creative. So I, I made a little store and I, I got this, um, this box spring and I turned it upside, you know, like a, like a little bar. And then I, I nailed in like a two by four or something like that to create like a little space. And then I had little shelves with candy and a candy shop, a candy shop. And my brother and his friends would come in and buy candies and whoever came to the house, I'd sell them candy. And, uh, then later on, I, I started getting into cakes because I, I was up, I guess I was always into sweets. Um, so at 14, I sold my first cake and I, I think I sold it for like 20 bucks. And then, cool. so with that 20 bucks, I bought my first can and then reinvested. It wasn't, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I invested it. And it wasn't until my daughter, till I was pregnant with my, with my daughter, I was at home watching those cake shows. And then I'm like, huh, like, oh, that, that looks pretty cool. And I knew she was going to be having birthdays that the cakes at the grocery stores uh, are filled with uh, horrible ingredients. So I wanted something, you know, something more healthy. Uh, so then I, I started my cake business. And just by watching those shows on TV, I knew I could do what they did. And I, I'm a visual person. So when I see something, I, I know how to create it. Sometimes I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it just comes to me and I'll create these sculptures of cake. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's, that, that was my experience with, with business. On a, on a side note, are, are you able to talk to like feel animals as well? Yes. I was curious yeah. about that. I have a friend of mine, yeah. he, like he talks to his cat. I mean, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. God bless him. I don't know how he does that, but okay. That's- Anim- animals are, are, they are emotional creatures. Um, Absolutely. You know, they, they feel energy as well. We, we have a, a dog that um, he comes to our house. He's not even our dog and he, he lives, you know, down the hill from us and he always goes to our house and, you know, we give him love and he, he can feel energy. We've, uh, we've taken, taken him outside and there was a couple that was out there and right away he, he threw up, but yeah. he, he really feels, you know, people's energy and, uh, you can also feel energy in places like buildings and things like that. I've, I've experienced walking into a building and then I'll start getting nauseous or, Really? You know, there, there's a residual energy that's still there, especially old buildings. That You're visiting like the treasury building in DC, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I think a lot of people do that too. You know, we all say these common phrases like this place did the a weird vibe or that person, like we talked about the elevator earlier. You're yeah. in there and it's like just somebody next to you. It's like, for some reason, there you're not vibing again that's vibration that's energy you're feeling with them it's just you don't know what it is but you're picking it up and so we all are energetic people we're all energetic creatures and we all are connected in some way shape or form just some of us can identify that and we're just more conscious of that than most people but we can help people to tap into that and, and Aaron how did you get started in your entrepreneur career well when I graduated high school I got a job as a personal trainer that's how I started my health career okay. and I think it was my second 
semester in college, but you know, most kids they don't know what they want to do. I met a, a chiropractor at the time, and eventually, a long story, I, I, I wanted to figure out how do I become a chiropractor. So they told me, well, you got to go to school, do this. So I figured out all the classes to take, and I spent all my schooling about ten years to become a chiropractor. And I always thought hey, I'd like to have my own practice and run That's my so own cool. business. And as I got out of school, I got an opportunity to work at a, a holistic wellness hospital down in Rosarito, Rosarito, Mexico, of all places. And it gave me a lot of experience, but I was still working for a company. And just something to me, like, it was great experience, but I just feel like I had a bigger vision in myself. Like, I knew I was destined to do something great, and I always wanted to do my own thing. I guess that's a stubborn course part of me. Um, but... I wanted to run my own business. Now, I didn't know how to do that, but I knew I wanted to do that. So after about two and a half years, I made the decision. I went and started my own practice, started very small, and then I moved around. I was in Encinitas for all places when I started. And and I, just being in that entrepreneurial mindset, and I, after a while, I realized, like, again, there's, there's so many things that people can create and do. If you have a talent or a skill, you know, somebody can value that. And they'll pay you for it. Yeah. And, and, no, and I was thinking too, like if I was to do something else, like I've been trying to train our dogs, and I, I see all these you know YouTube videos of people that are posting videos like how to train your dog. I'm like, well, you, you can if you wanted to, you can learn how to do a skill. You can become a dog trainer, learn how to how to do it, get some experience. And there's people out there that will pay you for that, just like anything else. And so that's why we, when we developed this, we said, well, we, if we want to separate from our other businesses. We just created a whole new business because this is a talent and a, and a service that a lot of people in this world need. And because a lot of people that deal with a lot of pain and we realize that we are very good at this Yeah, and, and we can help so many people out. Yeah. You guys are superpower. Like together, it's like, yeah. like Voltron forms up. Right? <laughs> Wonder twin powers, right? Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations. Right, yeah. How did Thank you, guys, you so much. How did you guys find each other? Uh, well, I was, uh, at the time, I was looking for an office to do my Reiki, because I, I wanted to branch off and do my own thing and uh, kind of step away from the cakes for a little bit, because cakes do take a long time. Yeah. Uh, so the friend that I went to, she said, well, you know, you can, you can use our office. And then later on, she asked me if I wanted to become a technician for them using a, a microcurrent device, which uses frequencies. And, to help people heal. So I'm like, well, that, that's kind of along those same lines. So, so I took the training and we, it was going to be the same office that we were going to share. He was a, the doctor for them. So okay. she's like, you're going to meet Dr. Aaron. So I want you guys to, to meet. And that way, Blind you know, date, huh? <laughs> yeah, you can set your schedules accordingly. And so that, that's pretty much how we met through a mutual friend. I think I talked her. I think I talked her ear off for like an hour, but without her giving a word, and I wanted to sound very smart. So I think he was nervous. <laughs> he was a little bit nervous. Yeah, just a little bit. I just love it. Is that pretty much how it went, Aaron? <laughs> yeah, but it's just the way things worked out because uh, six months prior to that, you know, when I was living in Mexico working at the hospital, you know, I, I some part of me it wasn't so much the finances, but at the time, like my biggest thing that I wanted was I, I wanted. A, a, a really good relationship and I had my own resistance from that and why like a lot of other relationships had failed and I have another story when I was in school how I got started in this neuroemotional work but I went to a seminar in Sedona of all places which is beautiful yeah it's beautiful and that's when the first time I really had people just working on me they call it heal the healer and everything that I was just holding on to bottling up was just letting go and that's when I really sat there and understood like how to know what you want and write it out in full detail specifically because if you're going to put that out into the universe they got to know exactly what you want if i ask somebody like her daughter ask her what do you want for christmas she's like i don't know well then i'm going to give her something and she may or may not like it so you got to say that to the universe as well and so i want a relationship i wrote out exactly what i wanted in my relationship i made sure i worked out any kind of block of resistance around that which helped me a lot and then six months later, I met Veronica, and it's been five years since we're engaged. Wow! And when I went back and looked at that writing, and I looked at her, uh, I, I read it for her, and it was like it was exactly the way I pictured it. Nice. Well, you guys are. Beautiful. So if I can do it, I can help other people do that too. Yeah. Oh, no, that's awesome, man. Sign me up for that course, right? 
<laughs> That's awesome, man. Congratulations, seriously, yeah. you guys. What's the best way for you to reach out to you guys? I know you're working with um, a lot of people in the Southern California area because you live there, but you're saying you can do this all over the world. So we'd really love to yeah. you know, get you guys a little more publicity out there. So what's the best way for guys to reach out for you guys? Uh, they could go to our website. It's uh, clearconnect.com and connect is spelled K-I-N-E-C-T. We can okay. also post it uh, after the video. Yeah, we'll post it in the, the links and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we work with people like in Toronto, like all kinds of different places um, okay. all over the world. Yeah, we do it just like we're doing right now, video yeah. chat. We just go through a series of questions and we'll do the muscle testing on this end, um, help people to identify what their goals are work around that and then it's just you know a series of sessions that we do we usually work with people you know a minimum minimum three months because we know there's a lot that needs to let go of but usually about six months that we can really get somebody right on the track where they want they can also give us a call or number of contacts on our website um we'll, we'll set up there as well okay the email is the best so if somebody wants to work with us they have questions give us a call they can also follow us on facebook which is facebook.com forward slash clear connect Connect again, spelled K-I-N-E-C-T. We post a lot of Facebook Live videos, posts. So connect with us, follow with us if you want to just know more about what we're doing. And if you like, if anybody likes to work with us, you know, we have a lot that we can we can offer. Cool, awesome. Well, again, I appreciate you guys coming out, and I'll post all those uh, notes and links on the show notes so people can go on the website and click on that too. So appreciate awesome. you guys. and keep doing what you're doing. And uh, thank even, you so much. Even if people don't understand us right? We know we're making a difference. So at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah. So congratulations for, for you guys finding each other. Hey, thank you so much. We appreciate you.